here is an exceptional question to help determine how well can you navigate and determine the direction. Early morning, Samantha started walking toward the rising sun. After covering some distance, she turned right, then again to the right, and after covering more distance, she again turns to the right. Which direction Sam is facing right now? You have four different choices. A. East Choice B. West Choice C. South Choice D. North Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can answer this question. One tip here might be to draw a diagram to help you with the direction. And I'm moving forward myself to help you with my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's start from the beginning here. When Sam started walking early morning and faces sun, it means that she faces east, because sun is rising in the east. After Sam turned to the right, means that she faces south now. If her first direction, shown by the ray AB, after she turns right, it's shown by the ray BC. Turning again to the right means that now Sam is facing west, which is displayed by the ray CD. And then last but not the least turn, after Sam covers more distance, she again turns to the right, which means that now she is facing north, which is shown by the ray DE. So the correct answer here is choice D, north. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an amazing question to help you find the missing item. You're presented with the sequence of bulbs. There are three bulbs visible and fourth bulb is missing. You need to select the missing bulb out of four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, I am moving forward to get you to the correct solution. But if you need more time, please make sure to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. As you might be well aware, to answer questions like this, you need to determine the pattern. There are multiple items here that define the pattern. These are rays, petal leaves inside the bulb, number at the bottom of the bulb, and then number of parts at the bulb's bottom construction. Let's look at each pattern individually. Number of rays that go out of bulb increase incrementally. Extra petal leaf inside the bulb changes alternatively with every other bulb. The third pattern is that the number of parts in the bulb's bottom increments by one in the sequence. And then the last fourth pattern is that the number at the bottom of the bulb increments by two in the sequence. Based on this information, we need to find the bulb with eight rays, with the petal leaf inside, seven parts of the bottom construction lines, as well as the number 14 at the bottom. And the correct choice here, choice that matches all of these conditions, is choice C. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an interesting and very unusual question where you need to count all dollar signs in the image. You're presented with the flower image. Image has many dollar signs here and you need to select the final answer out of four different choices. Choice A, six. Choice B, seven. Choice C, eight. And choice D, nine. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can count all possible options. Ready or not, on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I counted eight dollar signs. So my answer is choice C. The answer is C because there are six signs in the dollar bills as flower petals. One sign is in the middle of the flower. And then there is a one sign at the bottom of the flower base. Do you have a different answer? Please make sure to share in comments. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. 
And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an amazing question where you are presented with four word pairs and you need to find the item that does not belong to the group. The first pair is flower and petal. The second pair is circle and arc. The third pair is cover and page. And last but not the least, fourth pair is chair and chairperson. You need to select the word pair that does not belong to the group. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The key here is to determine the relationship between the objects. And in all object pairs, one object is part of another. Let's look at the examples. Petal is part of the flower. Arc is part of the circle. And cover is part of the book. The only word pair where this rule does not work is chair and chairperson. Even though this object sounds similar, they are not part of each other. So the correct answer is choice D, chair and chairperson. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a very interesting problem which tests your analytical skills. You are presented with three circles and one circle is missing. You need to select the missing circle out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C and D. I think the answer here is obvious, but please make sure to make your selection. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. As you might have noticed, there is another set of lines inside the circles. And four circles can be grouped together, forming a square inside. So the correct choice here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now here's the question for you to test your skills. You need to find the missing shape to build a square. You have four different choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Do you see the correct answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and when you're ready, please make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is a very interesting question where you need to calculate percentage of Tesla Model S sales in 2023. You're presented with the bar chart, which shows sales for the periods of 2021, 2022, 2023 and 2024. And each section has sales for Model X, Model Y and Model S. Based on the information presented, you need to determine which number is correct out of four different choices. Choice A, 20%, choice B, 27%, choice C, 33%, and then choice D, 40%. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Hopefully you figured it out because I'm moving forward to share the final answer with you. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. First, let's take a close look at the 2023 sales. You can see that we sold 8 units of Model X, we sold 12 units of Model Y, and then 10 units of Model S. So total units sold in 2023 would be 8 plus 12 plus 10 equals 30. Now let's determine the percentage. We sold 10 units of Model S in 2023, which is one third of the 30 units in total. So the correct choice here is one third of 100%, which is approximately 33%. So the answer here is choice 3, 33%. Hopefully you figured this out and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And here's the question for you to test your skills. You need to find the missing snowman. Please take a close look at the sequence and see if you can come up with the right answer by selecting one of the four following choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and once ready, please make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's an amazing question to test your math skills. You're presented with simple expression and you need to calculate the value of this expression. You have four different choices. Choice A, one. 
choice B 3, choice C 7, and then choice D 9. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can calculate the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you the correct answer. As you might have guessed, the correct answer here is choice A 1. But why? If you look at the expression closely, you will see that the first part that would need to be calculated is the division, dividing 3 by 1 third. To emphasize this, I put this expression into red parentheses. When you calculate 3 divided by 1 third, you will get to the result of 9. And then you need to do sequentially subtraction and then addition. 9 minus 9 equals 0, plus 1 equals 1. This is the reason the correct choice here is choice A, 1. And then one last important reminder is that the sequence is determined based on the acronym PEMDAS. The sequence is driven by parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition and subtraction. Hopefully you refreshed your memory from middle school and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's a wonderful question to test your analytical skills. You're presented with the series of shapes in the boxes. The first box has the arrow pointing left. Second box has triangle pointing left. Third box has a square. And then comes the box with the missing shape. You have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to reveal you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better ideas on how to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. You're probably tired of hearing it on this channel, but the key to solve these types of challenges is to find the pattern. And the pattern here is that the sides of the shape are increasing by one in each sequence. So for example, if you look at the first shape, it has two sides and the number continuously increases to three and four sides respectively, which means that the missing shape should have the five sides. And only shape B has five sides. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's one of my favorite questions where you need to count number of squares presented in the shape. You have four different choices. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 15 squares and choice D 18 squares. Take a close look at the picture to see if you can come up with the right choice. Nobody is going to give you a tip during the real test, but I am going to give you a hint. Look at the squares inside the squares. Ready or not, I am moving forward to get you to the correct solution. Believe it or not, I counted 15 squares in this picture. Let me show them all to you. 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Did you get to a different number? Please correct me and post your solution in the comment section of this video. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an amazing question to test your analytical skills. You need to calculate the missing number. You're presented with triangle, which is split into three equal or almost equal parts. At the bottom of the triangles, on each side, you see numbers 8 and 2. In the middle section of the triangles, you see numbers 4 and 6. And on the top of the triangle, you see number 3 on the left. And on the right, you need to calculate the missing number. 
you're presented with four different choices. Choices A, 6. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 7. And choice D, 2. Do you see the answer? I'm gonna give you a quick hint here. You need not to guess the number, but you need to calculate it. Let's move forward so we can get to the correct solution together. I keep repeating it on this channel, but the fundamentals are solid. You need to always look for patterns in these types of questions. And there are actually two patterns here. The first pattern is that each row adds up to 10, and vertically value add up to 15. So for example, if we add 8 plus 2, that would be equal to 10. 4 plus 6 would be equal to 10. And 3 plus the missing number would also be equal to 10. So the correct answer here is choice C, 7. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I love this question because it truly makes you think to determine the final answer. You need to determine which number has the lowest value. And you have four different choices. Choice A, 1 third plus 0 0.4. Choice B, 1 plus 2.1. Choice C, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.31. And choice D, 6 tenth. Give yourself a few seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. The tricky part here is that the question is designed to make you do a mental math. To get to the final answer, you need to simplify all the options. For example, option A, 1 third plus 0 0.4 equals 0 0.33 plus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.73. Choice B, 1 plus 2.1 equals 3.1. Choice C, 0 0.20 plus 0 0.31 equals 0 0.51. And choice D, 6 tenths equals 0 0.6. Which means, if you look at the answers, that option C has the smallest value of 0 0.51, followed by option D, A and B. Was it challenging for you? Please share your thoughts and suggestions on how to better solve it in comments. And now, here's the question for you to try your skills. You need to determine how many triangles are shown on the screen. You have four different choices. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 12. And choice D, 14. Feel free to pause this video to calculate the right answer. And make sure to post your solution in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. I love this question because it uses your brain power and also allows you to improve your English vocabulary. You need to identify all the words with the similar meaning. The words are leader, lender, leather, coach, and influencer. Keep in mind that there could be between two and five words in the answer. What's also interesting is that some words sound similar, but in reality represent very different meanings. Ready or not, I'm going to move forward and jump to the solution. Similar words here, as far as I see them, are leader, coach, and influencer. And obviously, if you have a different set of words, please make sure to post in comments. Let me share with you why those words are similar. The definition of leader is a person who leads or commands a group, organization, or a country. Coach is someone who trains a person or a team in the particular activity. And an influencer is someone who inspires or guides the actions of others. Basically, the similarity between these words is that they represent someone in power who uses his or her skills to help others. For example, leader could be a president, prime minister, or CEO. Coach could be somebody helping with sports activities, like basketball coach, or with personal development, like personal coach. An influencer could be someone who has following on social media, for example, social media influencer. Do you see any other ways to use these words? Please make sure to share in comments. And now it's time for you to practice your skills to see if you can come up with the answer. You're presented with chart of profit and loss between the period of 2018 and 2024. The chart shows revenue, expenses and taxes. And you need to determine during which period revenue declined. You have four different choices to choose from. 2018 to 2020. Choice B, 2019 to 2020. Choice C, 2020 to 2021. 
and then choice D, 2023 to 2024. Do you see the answer? I truly hope with the skills that you learned here, you can quickly identify the answer and post it in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Very frequently, you might get tested on how quickly you can form the words using letters of the English alphabet. In our case, you're presented with nine letters and you need to form the word using all the letters only once. The letters are R, E, P, X, E, T, E, S, I. Do you see the word? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can answer the question. Ready or not, I am going to reveal the answer, which is the word expertise. And the definition of expertise is an exceptionally high level of skills, knowledge, or performance in a particular task or within a given domain. To better solve these types of challenges, try to look at the presented letters and try to form the word. For example, if you start in the middle and go E-X-P-E-R-T-I-S-E, -E, you can definitely form the word expertise. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.